Well, what are the options in the region? I'm joined now from Phoenix, Arizona, by the former U.S. ambassador to NATO, Kurt Volker. Kurt Volker, Article 5 uh, was invoked yesterday, and there was a NATO meeting after this attack by Syrian troops on southern Turkey. How close did it get to moving to something much, uh, much more than this? Um, hi, Nick. And uh, frankly, I think that what you're seeing now are very prudent steps to try to prevent this from escalating. Uh, what happened, I think, was an unintended cross-border attack by Syria. I think Turkey felt obliged to respond to that in order to show that it takes this incident very seriously. But I don't think either Turkey or others in NATO believe that Syria intended to attack Turkey. And I think that by A, Turkey's response, and B, ensuring that NATO demonstrates its resolve to protect Turkey, it creates a very strong wall around Turkish territory and an aiming to make sure that this conflict doesn't escalate into an international conflict. We've had, uh, within the last few hours, a vote inside parliament in Ankara, quote, for military operations outside Turkish borders. Is that a threat or rather a pragmatic positioning of Turkey were it to be necessary? Well, I think in uh, Turkish minds, it's intended to be a deterrent that the authorization is already there should Syria intentionally attack Turkish borders or Turkish territory or there be an escalation of violence involving Turkish, or, uh, Turkish territory, there is already in place a parliamentary authorization for Turkish military forces to respond. With that in place, hopefully that deters that kind of activity and de-escalates the situation. Of course, one of the major problems is that essentially Damascus and Ankara are not speaking to each other. They communicate through third parties. What is the potential, therefore, for some gross error of misunderstanding now? Well, I think that the risks in this situation are enormous, and I think they go all the way back to the failure of the international community uh, to do anything about the ongoing violence inside Syria. Uh, that, that We've all said that Assad should go. We've seen 25,000 Syrians killed already. And yet, uh, very little has been done from outside, and the conflict rages on. In that circumstance, where the regime there is fighting against its own people for its own survival, there is tremendous risk of accidents, escalations, miscalculations. And so that is why it's so important that NATO and Turkey have at least taken these steps to try to de-escalate any international conflict. I would like to see us move on to figure out what actually to do about the situation in Syria itself. But I'm afraid that's not on, any, on anyone's agenda at the moment. But quickly, finally, uh, you are a diplomat. You were there sitting in Brussels. This surely is about confidence-building measures. Are there any reasons for confidence at the moment? Well, I think in terms of Turkish security, Turkey's territorial integrity, and the guarantee that NATO will be there to protect Turkey if there is a willful attack, I do think that this increases confidence or demonstrates strong resolve on NATO's part. So that much is there. But if you are Bashar al-Assad, all you have to do is say, well, I didn't mean to do it, and I won't do it again, and he has a free reign to keep attacking his own people. Kurt Volker, former U.S. ambassador to NATO, thanks for joining The Hub live from Phoenix, Arizona.